Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. God's wisdom. How many are ready for glow? You guys good? You guys probably already want to get out to the food trucks and eat, right? Yeah, no, it's going to be good tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about being the light. And I know that we have a lot of different interpretations of what it means to be God's light. And I hope that tonight, I pray that tonight that you'll, you'll see this in a different angle. That you'll read the scriptures with me and, and something's going to spark inside of you. And I'm praying and, and, and believing that tonight that we're all going to be inspired. That you wouldn't just listen to me as someone who's bringing you information but that it would be information that brings inspiration so that you can have a transformation in your life. And when we can get those three things working together, let me tell you something, we can change the world. We can change our city. And I'm not that person that likes to say, we're going to change our city and we do nothing. No, when we say we're going to change it, we're changing our city. We're doing stuff in this community. We're doing stuff beyond this community. We're doing stuff globally. And uh, when I say we, that means you. If you're a part of Elevate Church and you're in the mix of God's vision in this house, you are a part of we. Amen? Because we is better than me. And me can't do it alone. We need you. Look at your number and say, we need you. As a matter of fact, look at someone and say, where were you? No, I'm just, no don't, don't say that. <laughs> All right. I had to get that out. John chapter 8, verse 12. I want to look at two verses and then I want to just kind of just expound on that. John 8, verse 12, if you have your Bibles with you, open them up. If you have technology, use that. If you need eyeglasses, use that. Whatever you need, just let's look at this together. Because I want you to see this tonight. Let's pray this. I want you to say this with me as, as a prayer. Say this. Say, Heavenly Father, I have living ears. I have open ears. I'm ready to receive your word your truth. I have eyes to see. I have a heart ready to receive whatever you want to give me. So tonight, I'm in school. I'm your student. Teach me tonight. Speak to me tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I love God's people because every single one of us can shed light or we can shed light to a blind spot or a shadow that we may have in our life. And today I was uh, preparing for the message, and I already knew where I was going with this message because obviously we always plan and prepare. But I got a phone call today from um, one of our amazing leaders here, and uh, he started sharing something personal with me, something that God did inside of him through this whole series of stretch. How many were here for the series of stretch, right? Stretch your faith. And uh, he started sharing to me some things that God literally just, just shed some light on. And he started saying, you know what, um, I'm ready to do X, Y, Z. I'm and just started sharing some personal things. And it was, I, I, I was blown away because just this morning I was sitting alone and asking God, I'm like, Lord, I, I want to see our church literally stretch in faith. Like, I don't want them to think this is a cute series. I don't want them to look at the rubber man and be like, wow, do you remember that sermon? But that we actually take our faith and we actually do something with it. Yeah. That we don't just hear messages, but that we're doers of God's word. And then we start experiencing the fruit of what God wants to uh, do in our life. And after talking to him, I told him, like, dude, you're not going to believe this. I'm like, you're the answer to my prayer this morning. Because his thing was like, I need a stretch. And so my message tonight is inspired by this one man who kind of shed light on his situation. And it kind of stirred me up. And I'm praying that tonight you're going to have some light. And uh, you're going to also have some, some things that you're going to start jotting down tonight that God's going to speak to you. Are you guys ready for that? Yes. All right, here we go. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke. Who spoke? Jesus. He said, he spoke to the people again. Obviously, he, repa he repeated himself constantly because like so many of us, we forget what Jesus said. He said, I am the light of the world. And anyone who follows me, anyone who what? will never walk in darkness. So that means that you can be in a dark situation, but light's still with you. He says, they will have that light. They will have 
life. So it's not just light. That light is what breathes life into us. Let's look at another verse just to lay out some foundation here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16 says this. So the first part of John, he says, I am the light of the world. He declares who he is. In Matthew, Jesus, once again, now is telling God's people, you and me, he's saying, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to some who are in the house. No, it says it gives a light to a few people. No, it says it gives a light to all. In other words, we can't be light and be hiding in the shadows. There's no such thing as that with God. God's saying, I, I gave you light so that you can shine. I gave you light so that you can glow. I am the light of the world, and now you're the light of the world. And he says, he says, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Come on, in this house, in your house, at your workplace, wherever you go, you are the house of God. Come on, when we talk about the church, it's not a building. You are the local church. You and me, we are the church of the living God. Wherever we go, we bring light. That's who we are. Say it with me, I am the church. Because so often we think that it's the building. I go to that church. Yes, you do come to this church. We gather together. We stir up the gift within us. We stir up faith in this house together. The Bible says do not neglect the assembling. Do not neglect the coming of together in the house of God. But then at the end of this, when this service ends, guess what? You're still the church. I'm not just going to church. I am the church. And every time that we come together, guess what? We're stronger as the local church. And he says, so you'll bring light to all in the house. He says, let your light so shine before men. Let me explain something to you. Light is in us. But the truth is this. Light is not meant for us. Light is meant to shine out of us. For example, let's shut these lights off. Turn off all the lights. Media, turn them all off. Everything. Okay, so I got a flashlight. You guys see my flashlight? It's too dark, right? So check this out. So if I hit this flashlight, boom. Is this light shining on me? Is the light shining on my flashlight? Who's it shining on? Exactly. Turn the lights back on. Lights back on. There we go. <laughs> so, so, so check this out. So this is what God says. He says, you are the light. And let your light shine before men. So we have to understand that because if not, you'll just start reading the verses and not really have a, 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 a deeper understanding than just I'm the light of the world. What does that mean? That means that my light inside of me was created so that my light shines before men. And let's see what else he says. So that it, it shines before men that they may see your what? Good works, that they may see good stuff out of you, that they may see whatever it is you're putting your hand to do, that there's good stuff that comes out of that. And when they see that good work because of that light, that's, that light shines on them. And now they're wondering, what is it about you? What's different about you? He says, and glorify your Father in heaven. And so I want you to understand something, that the light that you and I have inside of us, it's not just to be light but it's also to do something with that light. It's also to shine that light. Whenever, whenever you go to work, whatever it is you do for a living, whether you work in uh, corporate, whether you are a entrepreneur, whether you are a business owner, whether you're in sales, whether you flip burgers, whether you clean houses, whether you do Whatever it is you do, whether you're in the industry, whether you're in music, whether you're in movie, your light has to show good works. And it's those good works that people then begin to wonder, who, who, who is it that's giving you the source to be so good at what you do? And I want you to get this tonight. Because I want us to not just be like, ooh, I'm the light, I'm the light. And we're just like spinning around and I'm the light, yay, 
I'm the light. I, no, I, I want us to shine the light so that men will see that there is a Father in heaven that has hand-selected, hand-picked, called you by name to do good works on this earth in the midst of darkness. That we would be the greatest light while we are in a very dark place. Let's keep talking. Now, scientists, now when they first started getting the, the evolution of light or, or understanding the, 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 the depths of what light is, scientists said this. They said that darkness is not a thing. And so often, if you think about this, I think that we're, we're in a, when we're in a dark place, we think it's a thing. But darkness is not a thing. As a matter of fact, darkness is the absence of something. So when, when this earth or when your workplace or when the schools or when our homes have this, this sense or you feel like, man, I'm in a dark place. And, and we start thinking that that thing, it, it's not the thing. It's the absence of something missing. Whatever it is that's missing is, is you. It's me. And as I started just kind of looking up these, these, this, this description of darkness, because how many know that, that in moments in your life, moments in my life, I've said this, and I'm sure many of you probably can relate. I said, man, you know what? I, I just feel like something's missing in my life. Have you ever said that to yourself? Have you ever been in a season, you're just like, man, something's missing. Like, okay, I got the job. Okay, I got the house. I got the car. I got the, uh, whatever it is you got. You're like, okay, I got, I got the wife. I got the, I, and, but you're like, but there's still something missing. And we start looking in all the wrong places to try to fulfill what's missing. And the reality is that we need God to illuminate his light in us in that missing place season of our life and that's what we need more than ever and so here's the definition of darkness darkness is the total absence of light it's the total absence it's not just the absence of light it's the total absence that means it it's nothing it's com it's the total complete absence of any light and i think sometimes as believers when we're not following Christ, there can be the absence of God's light, God's presence, God's person, God's power in our life. And then we start wondering, there's something missing. Maybe I need a new boyfriend. Maybe I need a new girlfriend. You know, maybe I need a new job. Maybe I need a new car. And we start looking for all the things that are going to make us feel better. But how many know God's not trying to make us feel better? God wants us to understand that he's the only one that can not only bring light into your life, but he brings life back to your life life are you getting this tonight so darkness is the total absence of light it's 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 absence of that which is legit come on are you legitimate that's what dark, it's the absence of what's legitimate i believe that every single one of us we are legitimate followers of jesus christ and and there's and the beauty about about when you think about light, light is something that can be touched. Like if you ever um, go out in the, in the morning and, 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 and it's been like a cool morning and the sun comes out, have you ever seen like a, a sunrise and all of a sudden you've been cold, you've been camping or you went to the beach and that sun comes out and you can literally, you can feel the light, right? You feel it's like, ooh, that feels so good, right? You can feel the light. You can, how many know that you can touch the light as well? Have you ever put your hand in front of a very, like, strong beam? Like, if you take my flashlight, which is super strong, and I start doing this, I can actually feel the heat. So you can feel this light. When, when God created light, light can be felt, light can be touched, and light can be measured. Think about it. When you think about light, you start talking, I wonder how many decibels this light gives. I wonder how many watts this bulb has. So when you think about God's light, we're thinking about you can feel the light, you can touch the light, and you can also see the measure of the light. What is the measure of your light right now? When you start looking at the scriptures like this, you start really getting a deeper revelation of what light really means. That means that when you and I walk in a room, people can feel us. 
people can touch. Like when you walk in the room, they feel it because you can literally change an environment. You can walk into a very dark situation where there is no life. But then you walk in, the believer, the follower of Jesus Christ, the stretch believer walks in and you start changing the atmosphere. You start speaking faith. You start speaking life. You start laying hands on the sick. You start speaking the words that are, for, listen, the entrance of my word brings light is what the Bible says. So the woman you start speaking, light starts literally chasing down darkness. You change the environment. So think about it. My light should not only be felt, my light should also have the capacity to be touched. And there should be a measure of my light in my life. Like I don't just, I don't walk in the room and just, you know, light up half the room. No, I walk in the room and I light up the whole room. That's, that's the kind of light I'm talking about tonight. Huh? What about darkness? Darkness has no measure. Because it's, it's, it's not a thing. It's the absence of something. So darkness has no measure. Darkness can't be touched. Darkness can't be felt. Think about this. Darkness is nothing. It has no power. It, it has no uh, uh, decimals. It has no, there's not, it is powerless. And how many of us have come to the place where we start praising more the darkness than we do the light that we have? If darkness is the absence of, it's, a, it's, it's nothing. Think about it. When, go, let's go back to Genesis. God said, uh, in the beginning, right? Well, let's just go right back to the beginning. He says, the earth was without form and it was void and it was empty and it says and darkness covered the earth think about that that's what darkness does doesn't it it makes you feel void it makes you feel empty right it gives you symptoms you start thinking man there's what because you know there's something missing but then God said let there be light and what did darkness do darkness ran Darkness fled. It says, and darkness fled the earth. So just think, any time that you and I are in a situation, any time that you walk into a hospital room, any time that you walk into your workplace, any time that you walk into a restaurant, any time that you walk into a coffee shop, you have the capacity, you have the measure, you have the power to walk in there and shed light, and darkness has to go regardless of who the heck is inside that place. Man, I have preached in places where I've had witches wait for me. Witches who've approached me and said, I've killed people. Okay, that's, that's, didn't think I need to know that, but okay. I'm not kidding you. Witches waiting in the room. They said, we knew you were coming. You know, I mean, in a more crazy voice, right? It's almost like a Chucky voice, right? It really, sometimes it's just like, when you, you're, it's just, just, it's like, it's like, do you have to say it that way? <laughs> no, but, but check this out. But when, but when you don't know the measure of your light, you'll freak out. Yeah. Have you ever walked in your house and you're like, ooh, I got the goosebumps, something's right there. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? Huh? You just, yeah, but do, you, you know what that is? It's not that darkness is, is empowering how you feel. It's that there's a lack of confidence of your light. Amen. That's all it is. Wow. It's a lack of God fitness that knowing that wherever I walk in, he, he goes with me. It doesn't matter how dark the place may be. I am the light, right? We, we used the, flash, the flashlight already. It was dark up in this place. And then I hit that light. Bam. It, people are like, whoa. That's exactly what darkness does. Whoa, what the? And it just leaves. Why? Something, something, something had to go ahead and produce the power and illuminate whatever it is that was missing. And I don't know what you came in here with tonight. Maybe you feel void. Maybe you feel empty. And you're looking for something to fill that. Well, let me tell you, Jesus is the light. And he can fill you and fulfill you because he's not only light, he's life. Can we give God a big hand clap for that? It, I have learned, and I've, listen, I've been in some pretty dark situations. I can say that. But 
in my 23 years of walking with Jesus, I have learned that God works his best in darkness, not in light. Because he is light. <laughs> that's, like, that's who he is. But he works his best and greatest miracles in dark places. Like that's where he works his best. As a matter of fact, I have also learned, and you may not like this, but I'm going to say it. Can I say it over here? I believe that God, before he even brings you into light, I believe that God will allow us to be in a dark place. Because the dark place is the place where you get developed. It's that dark place where you start growing in character. It's that dark place where you start growing in faith. It's that dark place where you start finding out that, wait a minute, without him, I can do nothing. It's in that dark place where you start wondering, like, you know, there's got to be, I need help. Right? That's why God says this. I am your present help in time of need. Some of you don't believe me. Let's just take, remember y'all, I know some of you are too young to know this, especially millennials, but back in our days, we used to use exposure. Remember those exposure, those, those 35 millimeter? Yeah, I got one person. 35 millimeter. And there was these little ugly time capsule thing. And it sucked because you'd take your pictures and you'd have to wait till you got home. Then not only then and sometimes you wouldn't get home for another week and you're just like, man, I, I hope I got that shot. You're like hoping. It's like, you know, it's the it's it really is faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Like I hope I got that image. You know, and then you get home and then you take it to to thrifty. Y'all remember thrifty? Yeah? Yeah? Not right, a thrifty. Woolworth. Y'all remember Woolworth? They're like, what's a Woolworth? Woolworth, that's my days. Woolworth. And you would take it to these places and you would drop off your, your film and that film then would have to go through a process. And the process of that film was it first had to go into the dark room before it could ever be brought out to light. That's what God does with us. It's not that God puts you in the dark. It's that God will use that dark moment and he'll start developing you and start showing you back in the light. Amen? Give God a better hand clap than that. You just have to tell yourself, if I'm going through something right now, God's going to develop me in this. And if you're in a dark place, if you're in an empty place, if you're in a void place, if you're in a chaos place, if you're in a confused place, you just say, I'm just in development right now. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the dark right now, but man, God's about to shed his light. I'm about to see like the best is yet to be. And you, but you got you to gotta talk like that. See, he, did not, he not only said, I am the light. He said, you're the light. You're light. We weren't being cute or not like, oh, okay, look at them. They're so cute. They got makeup and, oh, yay. That's how Christians live. We're, we just want to be cute. No, we're, 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 we're shedding light. We're, we're, we're trying to open our eyes to see that God is doing his best work. In darkness. Think about this. Jesus says this in the scripture. I got too many scriptures. I'm not going to go there. But Jesus said, he says, work hard while it's still day. Do you guys know that scripture? Jesus said that. He said, because at night, you can't work. So that means that you and I can do our very best in the light. We can do our very best in Christ. You can be more in the light of Jesus. But here's the cool part. He says, so work in the light because you can't work at night. You can't work in darkness. But how many know that even though you and I can't work in darkness, God is still working in darkness. Right? That's where he shines. That's where he works the best. That's where he does the greatest miracles. That's where he brings the greatest breakthroughs. That's where we start saying like, oh my God, there is a God. That's how you get the awe, back, uh, the awe of God back in your life. Do you know what the awe of God is? When you're just like, wow, how did this happen? Wow. That was God. And you just stay in awe. When was the last time you had an awe moment? Some of us have stayed in the dark room too long. Say with me, I am the light of this world. Amen. Let there be light. Now let's look at the definition of light. 
Let me drink some tea. Y'all think I'm always drinking coffee, huh? <laughs> it's tea. I lose my voice, and my voice goes hoarse. If I, so I have to do this after every single service and before every single service to keep the voice. But the devil's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, light. It's the natural agent. Everybody say, I'm God's agent. And if you read the Bible, the Bible says that we are his agents. He said, it says light is the natural agent that stimulates sight, that stimulates. Come on, we're called to stimulate some hearts. We're called to stimulate. Today, that phone call um, from, from this, this one leader here, he stimulated my heart. It was like a so light, it stimulates sight and makes things visible. Now, verse 16 of what we just read says this. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And I love this because when you and I come into a room and we begin to stimulate the people, when we begin to open their eyes to see, the beauty of that is that now they're able to see that, wow, there is good works happening in this moment in my life, and that good work is you, like you just stepping into their, their life. And, and I share this because if, if darkness is not a thing, Darkness is the absence of something. It's not a matter of you just being light. But what something are you doing? Like think your workplace. All of you do something for a living. All of you. You do something. For example, three weeks ago I had a good friend Madeline Carroll come and speak. She's, she works in the, in the movie industry. She's an actress in Hollywood. The girl is like super successful, blessed. She's now writing movies. She just texted me today saying that she's finishing her third episode of writing and, and super excited. But check this out. This woman, she, she's, she has a career path. She's an actress in Hollywood. She's a writer. She's now becoming a producer and all these things. Okay, that's what she's doing. And that's awesome. She's, she's doing what she's called to do. She loves what she does. But there's still something missing. And so often we can be people that are just trying to chase the dream, you know, make the money, get the promotion. Come on. We're just thinking about ourselves, not realizing that we're called to illuminate God's light out of us. And so here you have this girl that not only does what she's passionate about, but she's doing something about that industry, which Hollywood is dark. It has the absence of light. But here you have a young girl who loves Jesus, who follows Jesus, who, who is passionate about her relationship with Jesus, who refuses to compromise, to not do any nude films, cuss films, you know, anything that would jeopardize her integrity, her, 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 her character. She has had to turn down big blockbuster movies all for the purpose of not letting her light be put out. All of that for that purpose. And her something, the reason is because she said, well, my something is I need to be light in this industry. See, so it's not just about what you do for a living. It's what's the something you're bringing to that. Maybe you don't even know this. Maybe you hate your job right now. Which, like, I think it's like 80% of people don't like what they do for a living. It's so true. It, it could be more. It could be 93% of people hate what they do for a living. And then, but then we stay that way for the rest of our lives. And then, then you realize, like, man, my life sucks. And, and so what, I, I, what, I'm, what I'm asking you tonight, it's not just be light. It's not just shine light, but I want you to discover the something that's going to help you be the light that God's calling you to be in whatever industry God is calling you to go into. 
whether it's the medicine industry, whether it's the uh, movie industry, music industry, whether it's the, the corporate mi uh, uh, ministry. They're all ministries, by the way, right? Because why? If, if you're a believer, you're God's minister, right? So whatever industry, technology industry, wh whatever industry, fashion industry, hair industry, nail industry, whatever industry, you got to bring something to that. And that something that's missing is light. Because if you're just going to work to make a paycheck, that's not life. That's survival. You're just trying to pay the mortgage. You're just trying to pay the rent. You're just trying to feed yourself. You're just trying to pay the car. No, you're just trying to do all these things, but you're not light. Are you guys getting this? Okay, let's keep talking. I'm almost done. Time is going by fast in this place. So what is something you're doing to be light? Check this out. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 7. Isaiah is a prophet of God. And, and he's trying to get some understanding of what's happening in his world, in his season, in his life. There's so much darkness taking places. But look what, look what God speaks to Isaiah. Are you ready? Isaiah 45, verse 2 through 7 says, look, look, God says, I will go before you and make the crooked places what so so what 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 area in your life is crooked that god can make straight he says i will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in other words nothing can stop god do you realize that god doesn't need your approval or my approval god's not looking for likes god can't be stopped before listen before there was the earth, there was God. Before there were ever stars, clouds, moon, trees, before anything that was created that was created within this earth, God was here. Before there was even light, when, when the earth was filled with darkness, God was already here. So just think about this. Who do we think to try to validate whether or not God is good enough at all? Like, we, we, we have this mindset, like, let me grade God. God's like, Pfft, I ain't looking for your, your, your measure. God is immeasurable. He is more than enough. He is unstoppable, unshakable, unmovable. God is not moved by anything that we face in this life. Whatever you're going through, God's not, he's not up biting his nails right now like, oh, my God, I ain't no more. He's just going to go through that. Oh, shoot. No, God's like, Mauricio, I am the light of the world, and you are my light. Let's keep reading. Keep reading. I'll break, I'll break in pieces. In other words, ain't nothing going to stop me. I'll break the, 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 the doors of bronze. I'll, man, I'll shatter them. The, the, the iron, the prison doors that you're in, I'll cut them. I'll cut you. That's where that came from. He says, I will give you the treasure. Look at this. I will give you the treasures of? Now, treasures of, I didn't think God can give us treasures of darkness. See, our mindset says, oh, see, God is responsible for all this darkness. No, God says, I'll show you treasure in your darkest hour. I'll show you the greatest pearl in your darkest night. I'll show you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your nombre and the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. He knows every single one of your name here tonight. He knows your name. I have named you. Your mama didn't name you. I named you. God already knew. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Is what Jeremiah chapter 1 says, right? Before you were formed, I knew you. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will grid you or gird you. Uh, though, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the what? Sun. From the rising of the light. Look at that. 
to its setting that there is none besides me. Do you still treat God like that? He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. How about that? Isn't that what he said? In the beginning was there light and he called, he called day, uh, uh, or, or yeah, day uh, uh, light and he called uh, dark darkness, right? And so there was night and day and that's how he, he's, the, he's the creator of all things, right? I, I, I make peace. He makes what? Peace. So God can make peace in the light as much as he can make peace in the dark. And create calamity. At the same time, God can confuse the enemy. He can straight up tear up the enemy. Think about this. I'm going to talk about that real quick. He says, I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, I know that when you read calamity, we can all get, we're like, dang, so is God causing all this chaos and this? Let, let me tell you what happens. First of all, I never knew that, that darkness can be a treasure. But I started thinking about uh, back to, uh, to Noah. Do you remember when the floods destroyed the earth? Why, why, why was the earth destroyed? Full of sin, rebellion, rejection. God haters. The people were in deep, deep perversion. The people were in deep, deep darkness. And they had to live by a law that no man can live up to. That's why God had to send Jesus to conquer the law, conquer death, hell, and the grave, so that you and I can have now a relationship. And through the grace and mercy of God, we can live a life. Amen for Jesus. And so God... So God had to wipe out the earth. That's unfair. Paying taxes is unfair. But we still got to pay them. And the Bible says that when he, flood, when he flooded the earth, we never, we failed to, to, to think about this. It wasn't just the rain that came down that flooded the earth. Because remember, it's all about rain. But the Bible says that and God broke and opened the cisterns of the deep. That means it wasn't just water coming down. It was water coming from the earth as well. That's why he says, I can show you the secret treasures on this earth that no one knows but you and I can know them. So in other words, God already had pockets of water prepared for this moment where he had to. How many know that God is always one step ahead of the enemy? Like when the enemy throws you out a left field, God's like, I got you. Don't, don't, don't sweat it. Like when we think, like, am I the only one that loves Jesus at work? God's like, no, man, I got a remnant coming. Man, there are people that are in there that I am raising up or there's people that I'm sending that have the like faith that you have. I'm sending people that have the like mind that you have. I have people that I'm sending that love Jesus like you love Jesus. God is always prepared. What am I saying? I'm saying that if God not only flooded the earth by rain coming down, but God already had secret pockets all throughout the earth that started releasing water and that's how the whole flood was, was created. That means that I believe that God has pockets of blessings for each and every single one of us and nothing can stop God. Nothing, nothing. As far as from the east to the west, God has things that have already been placed. Do you realize that God can bless you not only through your friends, but through your enemies? Man, he will, man, he will use the, like, you'll be surprised. Like, the greatest hater, God will listen. He will bless you through haters and imitators. He'll bless you through anything. You, he is God. Nothing can stop him. He can break to pieces the doors of bronze, and he can cut the bars from the prison cell. Nothing can stop him. That's what he's saying to us. He says, I have all the secret places. But the key is this, but we have to come back to that light because that light is the only one who can shed the secret and the mystery and the treasures that are found in the darkness. So how does that work, Pastor? Well, the 
only thing, and I shared this with the gentleman who called me today. Then I'm gonna pray for you. We're done. He shared some things, and I had to give him an answer, a response. And as I was sitting there, the Lord just, like, I got this so clear. I thought about a man by the name of Habakkuk. He was a prophet. And he was living, you think we're living in dark ages? Oh, no, we ain't seen nothing yet. Habakkuk was living in a time where the enemy was so, so wicked, so perverse, so dark. The enemy was, was martyring God's people. I mean, we're talking like masses of masses of masses of Israelites being killed. And Habakkuk is like, God, how is it possible that we can be your chosen people and we have to look at all this destruction. How is it that we can live in the depths of this dark? So he basically started bringing his complaint before God. And he's like, how, how, how could you let this happen? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Like, well, well, hi, why did God let this happen? Here's the reality. Here's the truth. You're not gonna understand everything and neither am I. I don't know why my niece was killed. I prayed for her. You can't understand. When you start trying to understand everything, you bring your play, you're going to bring your life to a place of confusion. You know why? Because the word why in the Greek means confusion. Well, why did that have to happen? Well, why did that? Why? Why? You know what? God doesn't owe us an explanation, but he does owe us the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what he owes us. Like, okay, God, I don't understand why, but you owe me some peace right now. I may not understand, I don't want to understand, but just give me peace. That's, that's his responsibility. And so, man, Habakkuk is in adverse conditions. He's in very difficult trials and, and crisis and tragedy and, and suffering. And, and all these things are happening. And he's like, what? What is going on, God? And, and look, look, look. So, so God responds to him. And look what he responds. And I, this is what I love right here. Because this is the something you're going to get tonight. God responds to him in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 4. He says this. He says, the Lord answered me. Come on, how many want the, the Lord to answer you? Then, then, then call on him. Look at his answer. It wasn't what he wanted to hear, but it was what he needed to hear. He said, write down the vision. I just told you that all hell's breaking loose. You want me to, to write a vision? You want me to, to start writing something for you? Like, I just told you people are dying. I just told you that that. We're, we're not making it. I just told you that I'm empty. I just told you that I'm void. I just told you that I feel like I'm, the, I'm in this constant darkness. And God responded, write down the vision. And you know what reminded me today as I was talking to this gentleman? The Bible says this in Proverbs. It says that where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. So the, 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 the greatest way to come out of a void place, an empty place, is get some vision back. You, okay, I'm sick. I got cancer. Okay, that was me. Okay. I wasn't writing a vision, but I was picturing my vision. I can see myself taking my kids back to school while I'm in the sick bed. I can see myself driving a car again. I miss driving a car. I got cancer. I see it. I can see me being held. I can see me running. I can see me being so fit and strong. I can, I can see my, I start saying, I can see myself preaching the gospel in Mexico. Never had done it. I can see myself on radio sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wasn't happening yet. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that those who read it 
will run with it. In these times, in Habakkuk times, it wasn't like you. We have a journal. Okay, let's put that baby away and put it. No, in those times when he said, write it on tablets. These tablets, like the Ten Commandments, it was tablets. They were not meant to be hidden. They were meant to be hung. And so the things that Habakkuk started writing, he started envisioning, envision first before you vision it out. It's got to start deep down inside. What do you see? What is the something you see yourself doing that's going to shed light and that's going to bring glory to God the Father? What is it? Is it just keep doing your job? Or is there more? I think there's more in you. I think God has so much more in you. Yeah, but you don't know me. Yeah, didn't he say, I'll make crooked places straight? I'm a little crooked. Okay. Well, God's the best, you know. Uh, what do you call that guy that fixed the bones and all that? Car, he's, he, ain't no chiropractor got nothing on God. Man, he'll, he'll strain you up. I'm angry. Okay, God can fix anger. I'm broken. Okay, God knows how to repair broken. God knows how to mend hearts back together again. Huh? I'm broke. Well, praise God. Aren't you glad that he is the God of riches? Huh? He's the God of, listen, your prosperity is a reflection of the inner you right now. So how are you doing? Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming the system and start looking in you. Write the vision. Make it plain so that those who read it run. So that Habakkuk would write and write and write. And, and then he would have to go hang them all throughout the city. So while they were in darkness, every time they read it, they said, oh, I, this. And they started running with joy. They started running with peace. They started running with victory. And let me tell you what ends up happening in, the, in this story, okay? And then we'll finish reading it. Well, let's finish reading it. Tablets or whatever I read. Okay, can run to others, okay? Keep going. Come on. It is not yet time for the message to come true. But that time is coming soon. See, the difficulty is the development part. It's the dark room that gets hard. The moment you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a better marriage. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are? <laughs> I'm going to be a better business owner. Okay, we'll see. There's going to be some development. You're going to hit this place. You think you're on a high, then you start hitting that low, and then you start questioning God. And God's saying, hey, wait a minute. Chill. It's coming soon. The message will come true. It may seem like a long time, but be patient and wait for it because it will surely come. It will not be delayed. The evil nation is very proud of itself. In other words, the evil, the dark, the darkness, it, it is proud. It's going to fight against you. It's going to come against you. It's going to make you think twice. It's going to tell you the vision is stupid. Why are you believing? Why are you standing? Why are you writing? Why are you praying? Why are you going to church? The evil will tell you just stop going and quit and you'll default back to the old you. That's why I'm reading this part. It is not living as it should. But those who are what? Right with God will live by faith. We just got done with this stretch series. It takes faith to write a vision. You know why? Because you're writing something that is impossible for you, but possible with God. If you're writing a vision like, okay, I want to go to Hawaii. Okay, you can do that. Just save money and go to Hawaii. That's not a vision. That's goofy. That's goofy. I just want to go to Hawaii. Okay, save. Stop going to Starbucks. Right? I'm talking, listen, Elevate Church. We all have, see, we have dry seasons in this church. We have painful seasons in this church. We got joyful seasons in this church. We got victory season, victory season in this church. But you know what we also have in this church? We also have seasons where we felt like we lost or we actually lost. But God says, with the world you lose, but with me you lose nothing. God says, nothing is lost with me. As a matter of fact, if you've lost years, if you've lost life, 
God says, I will give it to you seven, I'll give it to you a hundredfold return. 100 more times I'll give it to you. But we gotta come back to that light. We gotta come back to the one who makes crooked places straight. We gotta come back to the place where we're saying, God, I need to get right with you. Because if not, when you start, if you're not right with God, you'll start writing your vision, not his vision. You're like, okay, God, show me what you want me to do. Show me something you want me to be. Are you here tonight? Hmm. Let's just, let's end it there. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, we pray that tonight that you would, that you would allow us to not forget that not only are you the light of the world, but we are the light. And no matter what season we're in, we know that you will show us treasures of darkness. Show us the pearls in those moments where we feel like we're empty. Void. Show us, develop us, develop our character, develop our integrity develop our persistence, develop our perseverance, God. So that men will look at us and be like, how did you get out of that one? And we start sharing Christ, the light of the world. And then people will be glorified by our heavenly father. They'll glorify him. They'll be like, how do I know your God? How do I, how do I come to this savior, this hope, this light, this peace? this visionary. Do you realize that God's a greater visionary than we are? Come on, I want you to, to just picture in your heart, right in your mind. The, listen, you want to get out of oppression? Start writing the vision. You want to get out of depression? Start writing the vision. You want to come out of that place? Maybe you're in a toxic relationship? Start writing the vision. Maybe you're in a place at work that you don't like and you've just been putting up with it for year after year. It's been 15 years, 20 years, and you've just been talking about quitting. You know what? Put a vision before you and say, God, I'm ready to believe you. How about, how about let's, let's, let's put our faith on the way of something greater than our own belief, and that is God's word. When, when Jesus called Peter out of the boat, Peter didn't walk on the water. He walked on the weight of God's word, and that word is what gave him the capacity to do the impossible. I'm praying that we would have that kind of vision, a vision that is impossible with me, but possible with God. Now, I want you to, once you see that, if you can see it, great. Right now, then tonight you'll go home. Don't go to bed until you write it. Come on. Get a picture. Download a picture from online. Get a picture of what you're believing for. Maybe it doesn't exist. Draw it out. Whatever you got to do, but come on, that's where faith, that's where we stretch. And we start creating a picture of a preferred future. And we start saying, Father, I can see you shedding light in my life. I can see you shedding light on my call. I can see you shedding light on my purpose. I can see you shedding light in my situation. I can see my healing. I can see my restoration. I can see my family coming back to Jesus. I can see me following Jesus 100%, being all in, not half in, not a pinky in, not a foot toe in. I'm all in, all in for you. I can see me serving you, loving you, worshiping you, praising you. I can see me living for you all the days of my life until the last breath. I can see me standing before you. I can see it. Come on, that's a vision. I can see me loving better. I can see me being more kind. I can see me being more smart, more intelligent. I can see me being more integrous. I can see me having more godly character. I can see me saying more no than I do yes. I can see it. And so, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would elevate our faith, that you would elevate our vision, and that you would elevate our life by the light that's in us. In that same attitude of prayer, if you're here and you've never invited Christ into your heart, that's where the light starts. You must invite light into your heart, and his name is Jesus. There's only one person, one person 
that died on a cross for you to pay for your sins, who sacrificed, he saw you the moment he was, he said it was for the joy that was set before me. He saw every single one of our faces. He had a vision of you to die for you, to pay for your sin, my sin, to set us free from the, the, the prison of sin, the prison of destruction. And Jesus did that all because he loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you, not religion. If you study all religions, every other religion's God always takes something from you. There's only one who gives something to you, and his name is Jesus, and he gives you life and life more abundantly. Everyone else, they require something. Jesus said, free 99, I'll save you. So if you're here and you've never invited Christ Jesus in your life, or maybe you've been kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I believe this, and you've just been, you've been on the fence for too long, stop it. Come on, God is smarter than all of us put together. I think God knows what he's talking about. He loves you. At the count of three, you'll lift your hand high in the air, and we'll pray together. We'll pray. It'll be the most amazing prayer you'll pray. Come on, you're inviting Jesus into your heart. He is your Savior. He wants to save you. Save me from what? Save me from a place called hell. That's a dark place. Why does God send people to hell? No, God doesn't send people to hell. People choose to go to that place. God said, I created heaven. I created light, and I want you to choose light. And the only way you can do that is by you saying, Jesus, I... I, I believe with my heart tonight, and I confess with my mouth that you're Lord and Savior, and without you, man, I can do nothing. At the count of three, you'll lift your hand high in the air if you're saying, Pastor, I, I want to receive Christ tonight. I want to know this Jesus. I want to know this love. I want to know this Savior. One, you're not ashamed. Two, come on, you know you're not here by accident. You know you're here with a purpose. Ready? Three, if that's you, lift your hand high in the air quickly. Anyone here at all, you're saying, I, I see that. Anyone else? I see that. Awesome. Anyone else? Lift your hand high quickly. There's no shame here. I see that. Thank you. Anyone else? You're saying, man, pastor, I got invited to this church. I thought it was weird at first, but it totally makes sense. Anyone else? Quick, if you didn't lift your hand, lift it high quickly now. All right, let's all pray together. All of you, especially those that lifted your hand. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for not giving up on me and for loving me the way you have this night. I'm born again, filled with your light and your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.